this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a realistic rain effect in Photoshop. And if you watched the tutorial before on how to create a rain effect, you probably know that you can create them using filters. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom rain brush from scratch. And in my opinion, using a custom brush is much better because you can create it once and then use it over and over again instead of going through multiple steps of adding filters each time you wanna add a rain effect. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. So we're going to be adding the rain effect on top of this image. But first, let's create the custom rain brush. You're going to start by creating a new document. And this document is going to be 1000 by 1000 pixels. And click on create. Make sure your background color is white. Then create a new layer. Take the brush tool. Switch the foreground color to black. And then I'm going to take a hard brush. And just increase the softness just a little bit. And then I'm going to click once. And now we have this black circle. So what I'm going to do is transform this circle. And I'm going to also hold shift and alt to unlock proportional transform. And I'm going to squish it down all the way. Until we get the thin line like this. Okay, we're going to add multiple of these. So I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag to create a copy of it. And I'm going to transform this one again and make it smaller. Okay, I'm going to create another copy of this one. And again, we're going to make this one a little bit smaller. I'm going to create one last copy and this one is going to be very small like so. Okay, so these four line variations are what's going to create the randomized rain effect. But before we convert this one to a brush preset, I want to make a few changes to it to remove the imperfections and make it look a little bit more like a rain line. So what I'm going to do is select the first one, then hold shift and select the last one. And then click on Ctrl Alt E to create the merge visible of all layers. Then you're going to select that layer and go to filter, pixelate and choose mezzotint. So using this scroll bar, you're going to see how the effect is going to look like on the preview window here. And then what you're going to do is select course dot from the drop down list and then click OK. This is going to add some rustic effect and remove the imperfections. I want to do this one more time, so I'm going to go to Filter, Pixelate, choose Mesotint, and this time I'm going to go with Fine Dots, then click OK. Next, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and I'm going to add some Gaussian Blur just to remove that harshness and make it look less perfect. So about 0.8 pixel is OK. I'm going to click OK. The next thing you're going to add is another filter by going to filter blur and this time add a motion blur filter. So make sure to change the angle to zero. And now you're going to increase the distance just a little bit so that the gaps between these lines are somewhat filled. So about seven or eight pixels is okay. Click okay. And the last thing you're going to do is add some levels by clicking on control or command L if you drag the midtone slider to the left, you're going to increase that imperfection effect. And if you also drag it to the right, you're going to make the lines look smoother, just like they was before. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to drag the slider a little bit to the left. And I'm going to also drag this bottom slider to the right to make the overall lines less visible. Just like so. And then I'm going to click OK. So these are all the changes that we need to do. Now we can convert this one to a brush preset. And to do that, you're going to go to edit and then choose define brush preset. Then you can rename your brush and click OK. So this is how the brush looks like. 
it does not exactly look like a realistic rain for now and we're going to be modifying some brush settings for that. So we're going to go back to the original document and I'm going to create a new layer on top. And now we can open up the brush settings panel to modify some settings. If you don't see this, the brush settings tab, you can always open it by going to window and then choose brush settings from here. Okay, so as you are making changes in the brush settings panel, you're going to see how your brush is going to look like inside this preview window. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, under brush tip shape, I'm going to increase the spacing just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to enable shape dynamics and increase the size jitter. As you can see here, it's going to add some variations in brush size and make smaller and bigger brush strokes to randomize the effect. Next, you're gonna keep the minimum diameter and the angle jitter to zero. And here under control, I'm gonna change it to initial direction. And what will this do is going to make the rain effect follow your br the brush stroke that you make. So if I click here and drag from the left, you will see that the, the rain is falling from the left hand side. And if I click and drag from the right, you will see that the rain effect is now coming from the right and following my brush stroke. Okay, the next thing you need to enable is scattering. Check the both axis checkbox and then increase the scattering to your liking. This is going to add spacing between the brush strokes and it's going to help the rain effect look a little bit more realistic. All right, the next thing you're going to enable is transfer and then increase the opacity jitter. And this, as the name implies, will make the brush strokes different in opacity levels. So this is also very helpful on making the effect look realistic. So for me, about 40% looks good. And the last thing I'm going to check is build up. What build up does is it's gonna allow you to click and hold on the mouse and it's going to slowly add the brush strokes and build up the effect. All right, so that's all the settings that we need to tweak inside the brush settings panel. Now to save these settings, you're gonna need to convert this one to a brush preset. So to do that, click on this menu here and then select new brush preset you're gonna see that you have a couple of options that you can check and the first one is capture brush size which is self-explanatory and it's going to save the exact brush size when you converted this to brush preset next is include tool settings which is the settings from the brush settings panel and also you can include the color which is your current color from this swatch right here so I'm gonna keep these two settings enabled you can also rename your brush and then click OK. So once you do this, you're going to find your newly created brush at the bottom right here. And now all of these settings are saved and you can use this brush over and over again whenever you want. So you can see that I have a couple of other rain brushes that I created before. And in fact, I'm going to use this one that I created before because I like the texture of this one a little bit better. The only thing I'm going to change to this one is increase the spacing. Okay, so now that you know how to create the rain brush from scratch, let's add some rain effect to this image. So I'm going to be adding the rain effect in multiple layers. Uh, we're going to add some small rain in the background and bigger rain in the foreground to make the effect look realistic. So on a new layer, I'm going to take a small brush size. I'm going to increase the spacing just a little bit more. And I'm going to paint with white in the background here. So if the rain effect does not look so strong like it does here, you can always duplicate this layer. Or you can also click on Ctrl or Command L and add some levels to the image and increase the contrast. 
uh, I'm gonna also duplicate this layer and I'm gonna merge these two layers together using control or command E and also in decrease the opacity just a little bit okay so this is the first layer of the rain effect obviously we don't want this to be on top of the subject so what I did is I saved the selection of the subject before and it's inside the paths panel I'm gonna click on control to load this selection and I'm gonna come back to this layer hold alt or option and create an inverted layer mask this is going to mask the effect from our subject and now we can add another layer on top of this take the rain brush again and I'm gonna increase the brush size for this layer and I'm gonna also increase the spacing more we're gonna also add some depth of field effect to this layer by adding some lens blur and before I do that I'm gonna add a new layer underneath it I'm gonna fill this layer with black and I'm gonna merge these two layers together and the reason for this is so I can see the effect a little bit better next you're gonna go to filter blur and then choose lens blur make sure to change the preview to more accurate and then you can increase the effect of the lens blur using the radius slider so in this case I'm gonna choose the radius from 25 to 30 and then click OK and then we can change the blending mode of this layer to screen to hide the blacks and by doing this as you can see we have created some depth of field effect I want to also add a little bit more blur to the rain in the background so I'm gonna add some Gaussian blur to this one by going to filter blur and then Gaussian blur and I'm gonna choose a very small amount to about one pixel or two and then click OK okay well what I also want to do is change the angle of this rain to be a little bit more vertical and to do that I'm gonna first unlink the layer mask of this layer so we don't transform the layer mask and I'm gonna select them both click on Control T and I'm gonna rotate the rain towards the right just a little bit and then I'm gonna increase the size to cover the entire canvas okay so with all this rain added to the image I think it's gonna make more sense to add some rain drops bouncing on the umbrella to make the effect look realistic so I'm gonna create a new layer and inside the brushes panel I also have a dust brush and I'm going to be using this one to create the raindrops effect so if you don't have a dust brush don't worry I will include the link for this one in the description so you can download and follow along so I'm gonna start with a smaller brush size and I'm gonna paint some small particles here on top of the umbrella okay so now I'm gonna add a new layer on top and I'm gonna make the brush size bigger and this time I'm gonna paint bigger dust particles but before I do that I'm gonna increase the spacing just a little bit more and add some rain particles on top so to increase the effect of these particles I'm gonna duplicate the layer and merge them together I'm gonna also add the layer mask to this layer and I'm gonna mask the effect from some of the areas right here so this is before and after and as you can see this makes the rain effect look much more realistic alright so that's how to create a rain effect 
and as you can see by creating a custom brush and doing it in multiple levels to add some depth we were able to create a realistic effect using this method rather than adding it in one layer using filters so that's it for me today in a future tutorial i'm going to show you how to create water reflections from scratch so make sure to subscribe for that and also turn on the notifications so you'll be among the first to watch the tutorial when it comes out all right thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial i'll see you in my next one